Today I'm going to fly a Cessna 150 at the slowest indicated airspeed possible. Having said that, please be advised that in 2017 the FAA modified the phrasing of the slow flight skill element to require that the applicant establish and maintain an airspeed at which any further increase in angle of attack, increase in load factor, or reduction in power would result in a stall warning, meaning aircraft buffet or stall warning horn. To set up the procedure, we slow the airplane to the stall warning in the desired configuration, then note the speed and adjust for a slightly higher airspeed, meaning we should not have buffeting or a stall warning horn going off during the slow flight maneuver. Hamilton traffic, Cessna 22153 departing runway 35 Hamilton. Today we're going to do slow flight. I'm going to see how slow we can get the Cessna 150 to fly. See what the slowest indicated airspeed will be. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to do a clearing turn. I'm going to look to the right. I'm going to lead with my eyes and I'm going to initiate the turn. We're descending out of uh, 3,800 or 3,500 feet. I can definitely improve my clearing turns here. If you can figure out the one thing I'm doing wrong, please leave a comment below. Okay, and then I'll look under the left wing, and we'll initiate a turn back to the left, leading with my eyes. I'm going to roll out at a heading of 270. And we're descending down to 3,500 feet. So the first thing I want to do is check all my instruments and gauges. Make sure everything's set. Check my um, heading indicator, the magnetic compass. Uh, okay, and we're going to check the fuel level. We're full on fuel. Oil pressure is good right in the middle, and oil temperature is good in the green. Suction's good. Okay. I'm going to pull out the carburetor heat. I'll bring back the power to about... 1800 RPMs. Maintaining that heading of west and always looking for traffic out here. Okay, as we slow up, I'm gently pitching up on the nose. And we're in the white arc, so we can add a notch of flaps. I'm going to control altitude with power and airspeed with pitch. Slowing up, I'll add another notch of flaps. And a final notch of flaps. Okay, you'll hear the stall warning horn. I'm going to need to add a little bit of power here, so I'm going to go up to about 2,100 RPMs. For this maneuver, I'm only using 30 degrees of flaps. And I'm going to trim the airplane. And take a look at my heading indicator. And we have a heading of west, 270. Okay, we're at about 40, 45 miles an hour right now. 
indicated airspeed. We have a ground speed of 42 knots. Okay, I'm a little bit high, so I'm going to control that by bringing the power back. And I'll bring back the power to about 1900 RPMs. Okay, we're down to about, go down to about 45 miles an hour. I'll bring back the power a little bit more. Down to about 1800 RPMs now. Okay, now we're going to turn to the right. I'm just going to add a little bit of right rudder. And I look first, make sure there's no traffic out there as we initiate the turn to the right. Okay, I'm going to roll out on heading a 330. And I'm going to make a turn to the left. I'm going to look left. Now the plane don't want to turn left because of left turning tendencies. Uh, easier than to turn to the right, so all I need to do is release the amount of tension, pressure I have on the right rudder pedal. And now we're just above a stall, we're flying very slow, indicated airspeed at 20 miles per hour. See how slow we can get that indicated airspeed. Always watching out for traffic. Remember, airspeed's controlled with pitch, so I'm going to bring the nose back up a little bit higher. And we're down to about 10 miles per hour indicated airspeed. See if we can get that indicated airspeed to zero before we stall. Pull back just a little more on the nose. We have a really high angle of attack right now. I need right rudder just to keep the nose from turning left. Okay, we have an indicated airspeed of zero right now. right rudder in right now, counteract the P-factor. We have an indicated airspeed of zero, and we're at 3,500 feet. We have a ground speed of 25 knots. Now to recover, I'm going to go to full power. Full power, I'll push the carburetor heat in. Then I'll lower the nose. We want to try to stay at 3,500 feet. We're going to build up air speed. Okay, we're at 40 miles per hour indicated. Trimming the airplane down, trimming the nose down on the airplane. Want to maintain that heading at west. As the airspeed increases, I bring up a notch of flaps 10 degrees, and then I trim the nose of the aircraft down to relieve any control pressures that I have on the yoke. And I'll bring up the final notch of flaps. I'll bring the power back to cruise, 2,500 RPMs. And we'll check our heading, heading at west, airspeed of 107 miles per hour, and altitude of 3,500 feet.
this one I'm giving a flight review, is when I ask the um, pilot to demonstrate stalls or slow flight, um, they'll do it, but um, I kind of get the feeling sometimes that um, a lot of the um, a lot of the pilots just don't practice that, so they're a little apprehensive. Uh, me being a flight instructor, uh, I guess you know w when I was training students, I would go up and we would always work on stalls and slow flights. So it's just something that is natural for me to do. But not all private pilots will go up and practice slow flight stalls. So what I recommend is that if you're not current with slow flight stalls, and you have a flight review coming up, to talk with your instructor and see if he can put you through um, maybe some groundwork on slow flight stalls, and then go up in the air and practice those. Um, if you're not comfortable with it, I would, you know, I wouldn't say go up and, and just jump right into it. Just grab an instructor, go up in with him, and um, he'll talk you through it, make you feel comfortable. Hamilton traffic says 153 on our left 45, runway 35, Hamilton. Hamilton traffic says 153 on left downwind, 35 Hamilton. Hamilton traffic says 153 turn final, runway 35, full stop Hamilton. 